Got a jumping spider looking for some ideas on enclosure setup? Watch this video for some tips. Hello everyone, welcome back to Spoodapods. I am David and I am currently joined by one of my Konya's Scampi who couldn't help but follow me into the room when I started filming. Today I am exploring the setup of the enclosure for our new jumping spider, Blossom. And I'm going to be talking through some of the decisions we made when setting up in preparation for her coming to the house and just maybe give you some tips and ideas from my perspective how to set up the enclosure for her. Now, your enclosure setup is going to be kind of unique to you you're going to want to set it up how you want. There are some hard and fast rules you want to stick by that are kind of common across all jumping spider enclosures. However, treat it as an individual experience. Enjoy it, set it up how you think is best. Now you can probably see a Blossom's enclosure in the background there next to the isopods and that's deliberate. I've popped it there and I've got it set up in advance. So Blossom isn't actually here when I'm filming this video because I wanted that enclosure set up, ready and kind of cycled so there's no issues in there before she even arrived. And I think it's a really good thing to do before your jumping spider even comes into your house. A lot of people set up the enclosure on a day, what's going on out there? A lot of people set up the enclosure on a day and it causes them hassle and maybe they have mold issues. It's better to have it all ready in advance and that way you save yourself a lot of trouble. Now Blossom's enclosure is exactly the same size as tanks and I got it from Entoscapes as well because I really like their enclosures. I made sure the enclosure was front opening because I want to make sure I don't disrupt her webs because jumping spiders tend to be arboreal and they tend to like to make their webs in the top corners. So if I had a top opening enclosure, that would constantly be disrupting her and causing her trouble. Now the very first thing I did is I made sure I had a decent layer of substrate at the bottom of the enclosure. You want a layer of substrate because it helps maintain humidity, it's more natural and it also helps to sort of... Um, just cushion your spider if they happen to have a fall or they go exploring down there. Now I went for approximately five centimeters of depth. I put a little base layer of, of coir, which is coconut fiber. Then I put some bioactive substrate on top. And then I added a colony of springtails into the enclosure. What do you want? It's such a little pest. Um, springtails are really good because they help to keep your enclosure clean. They also help to clean up any mess your spider makes like their poops or any carcasses they drop and it generally helps to maintain a decent environment because it stops mold from growing there. Any mold that will grow, your springtails will tend to clean it up and keep it nice and fresh in there. Now my next consideration immediately after I had popped in my substrate was how Blossom was going to interact with the enclosure. Now jumping spiders are arboreal, which means they spend a lot of time in tree canopies, um, in high rise plants, that sort of thing. So I wanted to make sure there's loads of options for her high up. So that means I put a little set of stairs, I put a feeding bowl like in tanks enclosure because it's been really useful in there. I made sure I had branches that um, angle upwards so she can climb up and down. I made sure that she had a hide. I also made sure that she had some platforms to walk over. Now there was a, you can do this all naturally, so don't be afraid to just have natural plant, bioactive plants or branches in there. But I like the decorative side of things. It's a lot of fun for me. So I wanted to have these things in here. And the feeding bowl has been awesome for Tank because he's kind of almost conditioned to go there if he's hungry. So I know he's hungry, so I can either encourage him to hunt or just pop something in there and leave it for him. So after I sorted out the top with like a hide, some stairs, things for Blossom to climb on and stay active with up top, I then decided to turn my attention to the ground floor, so to speak. And for the theme for Blossom's enclosure, I wanted a kind of enchanted forest look to tie in with the sort of like pumpkin and tie in with the little witch's cauldron I picked for it. So I got some decorations, some little mini mushrooms. I made sure I got some like little bridges and extra sort of scenery down there. Loads of stuff that looked natural and that wouldn't really bother Blossom if she decided to explore on the ground. Now the other thing I've sort of learned from Tank's enclosure, it was a good lesson, is you don't, I don't really want too much clutter on the ground floor. Generally I want to be able to keep it moist, so I want to be able to spray it or just um, hydrate it when I want to. And if you have too many decorations on the ground, you're not going to be able to get to that soil and then your spring towels are going to dry out and they're just going to die off. It also helps to moderate the humidity better if you don't have too many decorations on the ground floor. So I put quite a few down there. I had some plants, other bits and pieces there, but I did try to leave some open ground space and also thought that would be useful for Blossom if she decides to go down to the ground floor and start hunting there because I kind of want to give her the option of hunting herself or later on popping it in the food bowl if she decides she doesn't want it after a while and then it can stay there for a little while. So as you can see from the footage I'm playing now, 
I put little mini mushrooms, little bridge, little mini lake, some plants, a nice big bit of cork bark at the back. So again, she can sit on there if she wants to and bask if we pop her in the sunlight. And generally just try to keep it themed and populated, but not so much so that you can't see the soil. Now my finishing touches were just a few extra decorations, just moving some twigs and branches in there and putting some leaf litter on the floor as well. Some of it I buried under the substrate for the springtail's benefit, some I popped on top just so she can like walk on it or jump on it and etc. Now this, I'm quite happy with her enclosure so far. However, as I said right at the start of the video, it is going to be personalised, I am going to have to learn from it. So I'm going to watch Blossom when she comes, adapt the enclosure to her behaviour. If I find that she wants to go into the mid level, I'm going to put some more decorations there. She's spending all her time at the top. Maybe I need to adjust things to make it easier for her to go up and down. And if I find she likes going on the ground a lot, then maybe I'll add a few extra bits and pieces down there for her. Don't be afraid to adapt and learn. You can learn an awful lot by observing your animal, how they interact with the environment. And that way you can adapt it to suit them and make sure they get the best out of it. So guys, that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you found this video interesting, maybe gave you some ideas and hints for your own jumping spider setup. Blossom hasn't actually arrived when I'm filming this video, so if you see this video after videos of her arriving, don't worry, she's hopefully settled in there and okay. But in the meantime, from me and a very cheeky scampi, take care and see you later.